If you've ever been in a Linux discussion before, the topic of System D is going to come up at some point, and when it does, there's going to be someone who rants about how much they hate System D. So, why do some people not like it so much? Now, generally when people say how much they hate it, they don't really give a good reason for why, so I thought, why don't I just go and do that for myself? Now, to actually understand why people don't like System D, you need to understand what it's supposed to be achieving. So, System D is an init system, so once your kernel is loaded into memory, it will launch its init system as PID1, and that is basically responsible for launching every other process on your system, either directly or indirectly. So the main concern is that System D is more than just an init system, so it's actually a massive suite of applications. Right now, there's approximately 70 applications in it, and most of which have absolutely nothing to do with initializing your processes. So you have things like Login D, which manages your user logins, or Temp Files, which manages your Temp Files, or Network D, which manages your network devices, or Home D, which manages portable user accounts. Everything that System D is doing in this list is already being achieved by other software and shouldn't be achieved by your init system. Now to be fair to System D, all of these separate applications are their own separate binaries, so if you don't want to use the separate binaries, you don't have to. It's not like all of this functionality is just smashed into the init system, but having that suite of software all under the umbrella of System D is still an issue for some people. And that's because some people just simply dislike the team that directs the project. So if you don't know, System D is actually a Red Hat project, so this basically means that Red Hat gets to control the default init system on basically every Linux system, and if people are using things like Login D, Temp Files, Network D, Home D, this means that Red Hat also gets to control all of those other things as well. Now obviously, it is an open source project, so other people can go and modify the code, but because Red Hat is directing the project, they ultimately have the final say about what actually goes into the repo. So this means that Red Hat has a lot of control, even if that control is indirect, of most Linux distros, which is the same sort of problem that a lot of people have with Chromium. People don't like Google, and by having Google basically run the default choice for the web, and this means that Google gets to direct the web in basically whatever direction they want to take it. And due to Red Hat being handed this much control over Linux, there are some semi-serious comments from people saying that Red Hat is basically just trying to seize the Linux kernel for themselves. And some other comments saying that we're basically just waiting for System D kernel D to come out, which would be the theoretical System D kernel. Which I think is entirely possible that happens one day, but I think that most people are probably just being hyperbolic at that point. Now back to some serious reasons, even though the systemd init system isn't the same thing as the systemd suite, it is still a pretty big piece of software for an init system. So if you compare it to something like Runit or systemv init, it is still a massive application. So obviously it has a lot of maintainers working on it, but larger code bases are going to be more susceptible to bugs. This is just how code works. If you have more lines of code, it's more likely there will be bugs in the application. So some people want to run something like Runit or OpenRC simply just because it's a smaller application and the chance of having a bug in that is going to be much smaller. And some people feel like distro maintainers are just blindly accepting systemd because it's just the default choice for an init system. Now, if we were talking about, say, a web browser and the fact that most people just go and download Google Chrome because Chromium is just the default choice on the web, even though I don't like it, it is the default choice. If we were talking about that, sure, most people probably don't put too much thought into what they want to use. But in the case of an init system, I feel like most distro maintainers are probably taking their job a little bit more seriously than that. Now obviously there probably are cases where people just do pick it because it is the default choice, but most are probably putting in a little bit more work than that. I know in the case of Debian, they've had very long discussions in their mailing list and they've had multiple votes on it and ultimately they decided that going forward, running systemd was going to be the best thing for their distro. Now I don't know about other distros, but I imagine that in the case of something like Arch, it's probably going to be roughly the same. And unlike most software on your system, it's actually really difficult to change out your init system. So generally, you don't really have much of a choice for what init system you want to use. You're pretty much just stuck with whatever the distro maintainers say, this is what we're going to be using on this distro. Now, there are some exceptions, one being Artix, which actually lets you use OpenRC, Runit, or S6. I think those are the three that let you use, but most distros, you're pretty much just stuck with one option. 
And if you feel like System D so egregiously rejects the Unix philosophy to actually use that distro, you're pretty much just stuck not being able to use it. Now, luckily, most of the major distros, if they're not already using something besides System D, there is a System D-less version. So in the case of Arch Linux, you have Artix, and in the case of Debian, you have Devowin. So if you do want to use one of those bases, but you don't want to use it with System D, those options actually do exist for you to use. Now, I did say you can replace your init system, but that's only if you're not using GNOME, because for whatever reason, GNOME actually has dependencies on System D. Now, I presume there is some important design decision for why they've gone and done this, but I don't really know why a desktop environment needs to be dependent on a specific init system and not just work with any of them. If someone knows why, feel free to leave it in the comments down below, but I don't really know why that's actually the case. So if you're not already thinking about your init system, is it something that you should really care about? Well, I know someone's probably going to come into the comment section and say that I'm going to be wrong here, and here's why systemd is bad for this reason, this reason, this reason, and you should just never run systemd on your computer. But if it's not causing any problems for you, it's always going to be running in the background anyway, and if it's working fine now, it's probably going to work fine for the foreseeable future. So if it's not something you want to think about, you don't really need to care about it. If you want to switch it out, you can. And one of the reasons why you might want to switch it is because most other init systems are actually going to be faster than System D. For most people, that's probably going to be the only practical reason why you might actually want to replace it. Because fundamentally, this is a pretty hardcore Linux problem that isn't going to be affecting most people. It's like with, say, your bootloader. Yes, there are other options besides Grub and System D boot, but if you've already got them installed and they're already working just fine, it's not like it's something major you need to address right now. Like, say, I don't know, your text editor would be. That's something you actually notice on your day-to-day -day basis. But these applications that are running in the background, just doing the stuff to make your system magically work, most people on Linux are probably not going to care about it. Now, I know it would be cool if more people did, but... That's not the world we live in. Most people kind of just want to use their computer and then just get their work done. And they can leave all of that stuff to the people who actually want to think about it, like me and the guys watching this video. And if you are interested in trying out some of the alternatives, some that exist are things like Runit, Upstart, OpenRC, and S6 Linux init. And this last one's actually kind of interesting because this one was intended to replace a previous init system called System V init not system D, system V, and prior to system D basically being the default standard everywhere, system V was the one that had that mantle. And besides the distros I mentioned earlier, if you do want to try out one of these init systems, you could try out something like Void Linux or Gentoo. Now, my opinion on this is that it really doesn't matter. Personally, I'm going to keep running system D because I'm on Arch Linux and I don't feel like changing it out. When I eventually switch to a new distro, it's probably going to be Artix, just because I want to try out Run It or I want to try out OpenRC. It's not because I have any problem with System D. It's more like I just want to try out one of the alternatives and just see what it's like. So let me know if you don't like System D and you think that my reasons in here for why you guys don't like them are completely wrong and I've just completely misrepresented your argument. Feel free to let me know down below, but I think that I've kind of addressed why most people don't like it. You might have some really weird reason that most people don't have, but I feel like these are probably the main reasons. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Kolbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Montaza, Joseph, Peter D. Rode, Tony Donald, John Marek, Mikkel, Nephite, Spagin, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, my coin tree, and all of that sort of stuff as well. And I've also got my podcast, which is Tech Over T, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version is available anywhere you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to go check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.